Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about an update on CentOS library. It's an ever-growing library of assets for Blender with over 320 realistic procedural materials, geometry node assets, and shader tools which gives you the ability to make your own materials. In the previous video about CentOS library, I had mentioned the features of the library in full detail. If you have not watched that video yet, I have given the link at the top right corner of this video. So this one is only about the updates that have happened since then. I will be talking about the exciting new geometry assets, materials, and all the changes that have been made so far. If you want to grab yourself a copy, link to Sanctos library is going to be in the description below. And to make things even easier for you, I have separated all the features of Sanctos library into chapters. With that being said, we are gonna dive into Blender and take a look at it. With Blender simply open here, all you have to do is go over to edit, preferences and install the add-on that you have downloaded from Blender Market. Once you install it, press N on your keyboard and you can see that we have a new panel right here. Click on it and here you can see that we have all these different functions that we can use. First, we have materials and secondly, we have geometry assets, which we will take a look at in the second part of this video. So under materials, all of the materials are separated into categories. So it's easier for you to find what you're looking for. By the way, most of the materials comes with enormous amount of customizable parameters. Using those parameters, you can create thousands of unique versions of materials which you can save as presets without filling up your hard drive as you would with image textures. These materials are procedural, they only take few tens of megabytes and does not fill up your hard drive. And I will show you few of the materials because I don't want to make this video way too longer. So first we are going to take a look at some metal materials. So select metal and then you can see that we have a bunch of different metal materials. We have rusty metal, we have painted metal, we have copper, some mesh metal materials as well and some smart materials too. So let's go ahead and uh, try rusty metal. Select it and then select the object you want the material on and click on apply. Once you apply, go over to rendered view from right over here. And let's just make a bit of space, press home key on your keyboard and this will focus the camera to the view. So here you can see the quality of the material and if you go over to material properties panel you can see that we have all these different values that we can customize and get the results that you're looking for. You can increase or decrease the rust which you can see right here and so on and so forth. So every single material has its own unique customizable values. Let's take a look at the painted metal material as well. It's super high quality and then you have some colors that you can change. Then you have peel progress, decay, dirt, dirt color, bump, so on and so forth. So play around with these, have fun. Let's go through some synthetic materials as well. Under synthetic, you can see that we have carbon fiber materials. We have car paint, plastic, rubber, sponge, resin material as well. So let's take a look at a carbon fiber material hit apply and then you can see that we have this one right here let's take a look at this and you can see this is why this add-on is very helpful so that you don't have to create all of these materials this add-on is such a time saver and if you go over to shader editor and you can see right here we have two node groups for the carbon fiber material and if you select it and go into the node group you can see all these different node groups and all the calculations that he has done to make this realistic is awesome. If you were to create this right now, this single material, it will take you around one day and you also have to master shader nodes. So imagine how much time you will be saving with this product. And not just this single material, all of the 320 plus materials contains more than this amount of nodes. All right, let's make a bit space here. Okay, so now that you have seen this, let's go through some other materials. In others, you can see that we have some iridescent materials, some glossy paint materials, duct tape, and some navy uniform materials as well. We have chocolates, foam, bubble soap, some clay materials too. So you can take a look at those by yourself. So let's take a look at some experimental materials. Here you can see that we have alien skin shader. We have fur hair shader as well and planet 2. There are a lot of materials and I won't be able to go through all of them in this video as I've mentioned before. Lastly, I'm gonna show you some buildings material. So let's go ahead and change the scene to surface materials and then Right over here, you can see that we have the desert tile material, which is almost realistic. And uh, you also have these other materials as well. You have concrete material, you have tiles, asphalts, ceramic, hex tiles, you have old bricks, old wood planks, and some roof tiles. You have stone floor materials as well. So let's go through the stone floor material. Select it, 
select the object you want to add it to then hit apply and here you can see the quality of the material these are all hyper realistic materials you can go to the materials property panel and here you can see all these different values that you can customize and get the results that you are looking for these are insane amount of customizations that you can get in a single material all right so let's add a old wood plank material it's right over here and here you can see the quality of the wood material as well the one thing i like about this library is that all of the materials contain such high amount of detail you cannot say that it's not real and if you take a look at the node groups of this material you can see all of the shaders and i am actually speechless you can see the maths going here multiply map range all the stuff to make this and even if you try to zoom in a lot you cannot see a single pixel look at the quality of the material awesome you can get a free version of the add-on and take a look at the materials yourself the quality of the materials so on and so forth and by the way we have some marble materials some gemstones granite material as well that's it for the material section let's move on to geometry node section and for that i'm gonna open up a new scene so let's go ahead and do that now that we are in a new scene let's go to the geometry node assets menu and then you can see that we have few options right here and they are recently added in this library so there will be a lot more in the future in food category we have cupcake so let's try the cupcake just select it and then apply asset to object it will turn that object into cupcake here you can see that we have the cupcake and let's go over to look dev mode and you can see the quality of the asset so right here under modifiers panel you can see that we have all these different values that we can customize you want to increase dough height you can increase that right here you can see and then we have cup height you can increase the height of the cup like so then you have cream height and you can customize to get the results you are looking for we have colors as well so on and so forth now let's move on to the next category and here we have furniture and in furniture we have sofa so let's just add the sofa right on the object so under modifiers properties you can see that we have all these settings that we can customize let's say you want to increase depth you can increase the depth how long you want your sofa to be we have cushion height as well cushion height 2 legs height we have legs width all these different values which you can change to get the results you're looking for you can come through and take a look at these values they are really really cool then we have some ropes and cables so i'm gonna go ahead and remove the modifier from the modifiers panel and i'm gonna go ahead and add a bezier curve okay so press gz move it up right here go into edit mode select the curve and rotate it place it right here the other end of it to the point where you want it to be maybe right here perfect then go out of the object mode select the curve and then select any of these and then click on apply asset to object and here you can see that we have the cable going from one place to another and you can go back to edit this then select move it right here and you can see that it's like so and again you have these values that you can change to get the results you're looking for the same thing with these as well and lastly we have tools which are simply array path array circular they are useful but i won't go through them in the video yeah that's for the geometry node assets now let's move on to the next part of the video all right so i have set it a scene to show you how you can use easy material baking tool so for this i have added a plane and i applied a material from the library and then i have split the view into two and then changed this one to shader editor and if you don't see anything just press home key on your keyboard and it will just focus the view to the shaders and here we have the outputs that are there for baking to bake materials just select the node group and then right click and you can see that we have set sanctos bake sockets select this we have the option to choose which maps we want to bake so i'm gonna go ahead and select color specular roughness height and normal and you don't need to select the displacement because it's the same as height height is directly connected to the displacement in the node group so that's why you don't need to select it press n on your keyboard and go over to the sanctos panel right here and here you will be able to see which maps you are going to bake and then we have resolution and for this video i'm gonna use 512 before we hit bake make sure that render visibility is enabled make sure to select the object to which you have the material on and then the node group in the shader editor after that click on bake 
it will take few seconds depending on the resolution you have chosen. Now that the baking has been finished and here you can see that we have the results. So click on any of the icons to view the image file and here you can see that and same for the other image files. Right here you can see that we can save the image file and save it wherever you like. I'm gonna go ahead and save it right here. It has already named every map with the material that we used from the library which is really cool and all the settings are set in the way they should be. So click save as image and do the same process for all of these. Once done, we can just disconnect this one and move it right over here. Shift A and search for principled BSDF. Place it right over here, connect it to this one and also viewport shading because we don't want Blender to crash. Select the principled BSDF and if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled under preferences just hold on ctrl shift t and find the maps wherever you have saved them then select all the maps and click on principal texture setup it will import all the maps at once so that you don't have to spend another five minutes setting this up and here you can see that we also have the displacement which we can also use in ev we will talk about that after this section of the video so right now we have this here let's just quickly save the project file go over to rendered view and you can see that it's distorted and that's because the strength of the displacement map is way too high let's just change it to 0.1 also change the mid level to zero and we want a bit low height as well so this is what we needed and here you can see that we have baked the material and it's working fine you can also increase the resolution of the maps and then bake them and they will look as good as the procedural material. And the good thing about this is that you can take these maps into any 3D program and place them right onto the object there and it will work seamlessly. So that's it for the material baking section. Let's go ahead and move to the next section of this video. So now I'm going to show you how you can use displacement in Eevee. So let's change the render engine to Eevee and we don't need displacement right here so we are gonna get rid of it instead we are gonna use this displacement map to displace in Eevee for that to work we are gonna go over to modifiers panel add a displace modifier click on new click right over here which will take you to the texture tab go over to the image section right here select the height map of the old wood planks right here here you can see that it's displacing but not in a good way to make it displace properly I'm gonna go ahead and select the object Go into edit mode, select everything, right click, subdivide under this drop down menu, increase the number of cuts to 10, go out of the edit mode and then you can see that we have this. Go over to modifiers panel, change the mid level to 0, change the strength to 0 0.01 and also increase the subdivisions level and now you can see that it's actually displacing. Go over to rendered view. So this is how you can set up displacement in Eevee and that's it for this section of the video. Let's go ahead and move on. In this section of the video, we are going to take a look at shader tools and these come pre-installed with the add-on. So here under shader editor, in the end panel, we have Sanctos panel. You have the shader tools and here we have a lot of tools which we can connect and make the materials. This is very advanced feature of this add-on and if you are an advanced Blender user then you can create materials with these because the way this works is you select a coordinate and let's say you want brick coordinates just select these add node group place it right over here and select anything else that you want to use with this one tile cracks mask or you can use the tile slicer just select them and add them to your scene and just simply connect and then just put it right in here and this is how this works you have all these different customizable parameters which you can use currently i won't go through this one because it's very advanced and it will make the video way too long and that's it for the shader tools if you enjoyed this video then you will probably really enjoy this one i do like to know what you guys think about sanctos library in the comment section below and that's been it make sure to like the video share it with your friends and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and not just subscribe also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss my next video thanks for watching catch you guys in the next one peace